Uh, Kevin Wynn is a two-time Emmy Award-winning journalist and communications professional based in San Francisco. I'm proud to say that in addition to being an MSJHS alumnus, he's also a Smoke Signal alumnus. <laughs> we got some Smoke Signal fans in here. Please welcome Kevin Wing and his talk, Communicating in the 21st Century, Spreading News in Many Ways.
So think about that. And um, I've been asked to say a few things about how I got started. So um, I'm going to keep that brief, by the way. So in the meantime, while I talk a little bit, um, think about some some things that uh, you know, whether it's ideas that come to your head as far as how communications, mass communications, and news gathering, uh, what it might be like, say, three years from now or five years from now, or what you would like it, to, what you would like it to be. You know, right now, I mean, we're, we're pretty much oversaturated, right, with information. Are we not? We are, right? We are. So um, it's probably going to get even more saturated over the next five years and more. I mean, there's so many things that are happening. Google is doing so many different things. Probably a lot of you have aspirations to work over at Google, right? Yeah? No? Yes? Free lunches and breakfast and dinner. Can't, can't beat that. So, anyway, think about this, guys, a little bit, okay? And, um, but I, I went to school here. I was, um, I was on the smoke signal. Um, I, uh, I was also in the yearbook and uh, ran cross country and was on the tennis team. And it was a lot of fun. But I admit that um, uh, probably the first two or three years of high school here, I was a pretty shy kid. And um, just the way I was. And, uh, but I wanted, I loved to write. Of course, I still do. And, um, and I wanted to be a reporter. But I had to break that mold uh, or that, uh, that brick wall, so to speak. That brick wall being um, the shyness. Because if you're a reporter, how are you going to talk to a, a total stranger? I mean, it's, I, I admit, I, I still have a little bit of shyness in me today. Um, this is very hard for me. <laughs> so I just pretend, for example, when I do television, the old, uh, the old joke is when you're looking in the camera, you think of the other person on the other side of the lens, whether it's you or you or you, you're at home sitting in your underwear. And you laugh, right? And you know, in other words, you're just thinking of one person. So you try not to think of, you know, a room of 125 people or, or, or uh, you know, many more people watching the news. But, uh, but to overcome your shyness and um, that kind of barrier, if you are interested in pursuing a, a career in journalism, uh, perhaps one day, um, do your very best to shed that shyness because you have to talk to people. And even more so today, it's the, uh, the, the business is even more competitive than it was when I started out 26 years ago. It, I mean, there's, uh, you know, I know there's only a handful of you who would like to get into journalism here. Um, but if you count most of the high schools around the country, most of them, most of the students who are graduating might say they want to get into journalism in some form or another, whether it's working on television or radio or the internet or even newspapers. Um, or, or doing news for places like Google. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is prepare yourself, whether it's journalism or any other field that you would like to get into someday, um, because for the seniors who are graduating, what, in about a week, right? Is that right? Yeah. About a week or so? <laughs> so in four years you'll be out of college, and uh, you'll be out in the, you know, as all the parents and my, my mom used to say, uh, you'll be out in the real world, and you will be out in the real world. Um, but it's a lot more competitive out there now, and I believe it, I, and I, I, I mean this very sincerely, I know how much um, you guys go through in school, not personally, right now. Um, you guys are all smart kids. I know your, um, you know the, the stresses and pressures of class and homework, and uh, you know 4.0 is just not good enough anymore. You've got to be, you know, so much more than that, right? And you've got to be involved in everything. Um, you know, hats off to you guys because um, you guys are, uh, you know, you, for me. I mean, I'm, I'm proud to to see you guys here on a Sunday afternoon and. And I know how smart you guys are, and, um, which is why I'm a little intimidated by all of you right now. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's going to be tough out there. I, I just want to tell you that, 
you know, have all your ducks in a row when you're ready to join the world and, and make some waves. And once you get out there and know what you want to do and hopefully have fun doing it, um, you'll go far. So I essentially went, what I did after I left the mission, um, I went to Ohlone and uh, I worked on the newspaper up there. And uh, I also worked on the radio station as well. And, um, and back then, they were also starting up a television station, much like what you guys do here, called MSJ TV. And we used to put out a uh, MSJ TV producer right here, or anchor. <laughs> so, um, from the experience at Ohlone College, um, which I have to say, really helped me decide what I wanted to do. I mean, I, working here on the smoke signal when I was a student here in Mission uh, helped me to come out of my shell and helped me to develop my writing and, and uh, talk to just anybody, whether it was the principal or my fellow friends or classmates. But at alone, what happened was I, 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 I was exposed to all those different experiences and that's when I decided I wanted to do television. So I went from Maloney, went to San Jose State, graduated from there as well, and uh, uh, like all of you probably would like to attend in whatever your profession will be down the road, you're probably going to have to get into an internship or two, correct? Is that right? Yeah. And um, so I had to do a couple of internships, um, which, which entail uh, doing just about everything, including, you know, making coffee and, um, you know, stuff that you might think, oh, you know, I, I didn't, this is not the kind of internship I, I had in mind, but it's, it's all part of paying your dues. So I got those internships out of the way and accepted them, you know, gratefully and gracefully. I was happy to have them. And I moved on and uh, was able to work at some of the stations here in the Bay Area, including um, Channel 2, where I worked for 11 years. Um, I also worked at Channel 7 for a few years. And just recently worked at NBC Bay Area, which is Channel 11 here in, here in the Bay Area. Did that for about three years. What I do now, um, I kind of switch gears. Um, and it, sometimes you'll tell yourself maybe it's time to do something a little bit different. Um, so I still work in television. I still do some field producing and reporting work for uh, ABC. But I'm also the, um, the spokesperson for the new um, uh, Bart Extension Project going from Warm Springs to San Jose. So I'm combining my communications um, experience um, and, and journalism knowledge into this new job, which is, um, you know, I'll admit, it's, it's challenging every day because it's something I've never done before. Um, but like I was saying about switching gears, I wanted to kind of um, grow some more. I felt that I had done almost everything that I wanted to do in local news, so I, I took on this job. So I, I, I still wear two hats, but it's, uh, it's a great joy and I love it. And my advice to all of you is that whatever you set out to do, whether it's journalism or uh, business or science uh, or anything all of you want to do, uh, just go at it with the kind of savvy um, that you can muster up, all the, all the savvy that you can muster up to be a success. And one thing my mom taught me when I was growing up, uh, well, she taught me two things with respect to career. One is, don't ever let anyone say that you can never do what you want to do. Does anybody ever tell you that sometimes? Like, uh, you know, you say, hey, I want to do this, and they'll say, well, you're not going to be able to do that. Does that ever happen? I mean, uh, be honest, I want to hear it. Yes? Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't do something. I know there is a word such as never, right? But put that out of your vocabulary, because we're here for a reason. And if you have a talent, if any of you have a certain talent, and you want to take it forward and persevere, Go for it. Don't let anyone stand in your way. I had one person tell me many years ago at a station here in the Bay Area that shall remain nameless, uh, went in for an interview, and uh, after looking at my uh, 
audition tape and talking with him for probably a half hour or so. At the end, he escorted me out of the, uh, his office, let me find my own way back to the elevator, and he said, you know, I hate to say it, but uh, I just don't think you have it. And that was about uh, 27 years ago. So I've been doing this now for 26 years. I didn't let him tell me that I couldn't do it. So one, my mom said, don't let anyone stand in your way. And number two, even though it is what you know, it's also who you know. You might hear that saying a lot, where it's not, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Well, it's both, really. It, it is what you know up, up here. But it's also who you know. Um, you guys know that by now, I know. I can tell. <laughs> so, um, so what I'm here today to tell you is, you know, go out there and just, you know, you guys are already inspirations to your families and your friends and this this wonderful community here in Fremont. And um, just go out there and make it happen for yourselves. And again, don't let anyone ever tell you that you can't do it, because you can. It takes, sometimes it takes people a shorter amount of time to reach their goals. Sometimes it takes people a little bit longer. But don't, don't, don't be, um, you know, don't let that bother you. Don't be disappointed by that. You know, just stick with it, and, and you'll get there. I promise you. So, all right, so enough of that. Um, have you guys had a chance to think about um, media, communications, journalism? Any, any thoughts about, um, I mean, we're all exposed to it with our, our phones and laptops and, um, how, well, let me ask you, how else do you get your information? Besides from your phone and your laptop, I mean, what else? What else is out there? Uh, Television. What 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 channels are you watching, or what networks or stations do you watch? Uh, What about, uh, do you get your information on the phone at all, your phone? Uh, no, I did come Your laptop. So it's, it's pretty accessible. You don't have to wait for the evening news to pop on, right? Yeah. Okay. What about, what about all you other guys? Radio. Radio? Yeah. How do you get your information on the radio? What are you listening to? NPR. Good, good choice. Yeah. NPR, NPR is very, very good. Um, Anybody else? I get most of my information from the internet, but since you also mentioned that we're being overloaded with um, news, how do you think we should filter? How should you filter the um, all the news and information that you're getting? That's a good question. Um, hmm? Well, yeah, that, and, um, you know, I mean, with the internet, you can tailor your interests to whatever sources you're reading or looking at, right? Don't you can do that, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, there are some things that you may not care to read about, may not affect you in any way or another, and then there are other things that you, you know, you want to be on the, on the cutting edge of, of knowing what that information is. So that, that's one way to filter. Um, are there any other ways to filter? You guys, you guys probably know this better than me. Are there any other ways to filter um, uh, information that's coming into your your laptops or Reddit. your phones? Hmm? What? <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? Reddit. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Here it is starting to. Change. All right. Anybody else? I think laptops, these laptops and phones and stuff are kind of broadening what we're uh, the information that we're getting. But at the same time, you can also download apps that are like specific. Like I can on my phone, I have a New York Times app specifically for news, and then I have another one for entertainment, another one for sports. So depending on the topics that you're interested in, you can filter out what you want to get. 
So each app uh, is specific to the, the subject matter. So if it's, like you said, news, uh, or business, or features, or finance, or what, what have you. That's pretty good. Are a lot of um, sites, uh, other uh, websites out there, have that kind of thing too, where they have those apps where people can choose what, what they want and what they, yeah? Like, like, like. Any of the new news sites, or um, I think um, Time Magazine? <coughs> Newsweek? Yeah? Yeah, you can tailor your, your, uh, your choices. Just like, um, uh, I don't know about you guys, I'm, I'm always interested in the weather. Like, I heard it's going to rain tomorrow. Supposedly, I don't understand it because it's, there, there are no clouds out there right now. But I like the weather because you know, I want to know that it's going to be 85 and sunny. And, um, I, by the way, I, I have to ask you guys because I read the, the, a lot of rules here, by the way. I, I got to say it for today. There are a lot of rules. <laughs> like business attire. And you guys are all wearing shorts. I'd rather be wearing shorts. You know, I'm just kidding about the rules. You guys are just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't, don't throw me out of C120 just yet. Um, but I'm interested in the weather because, um, you know, it's changing all the time, right? But I'm interested in the East Bay. I don't want to, you know, it's not going to affect me what uh, weather report is coming out of Marin or San Francisco or, or Fresno or Monterey, but what's happening here in Fremont or the East Bay, right? So, like, with weather.com, what is this? I have two minutes left to talk. <laughs> oh, okay. It's very subtle. Well, I guess it's better than the band playing music, which gives me the hint that I have to shut up and get out of the stage. All right, so I have how much longer? And does that include asking people questions too? <laughs> All right, that's fine. Because I, because I, I really want to hear you guys talk more about stuff rather than me, you know, rattle on up here, you know, for 45 minutes. So, um, all right. So we're gonna make this quick. So, um, where do you guys see communications and and news gathering in the next 10 years? Any ideas of what it might look like to you, or do you have ideas of what you would like it to be? You know, are all the advan uh, all the advances of what we have today in our world, is that enough? Or are you already thinking ahead to the next five years? And I know some of you are, because I've, I've been reading about you. So, um, anybody have any ideas? I've got a minute, 27 seconds to get this out of you, so, sir. seconds to say goodbye, <laughs> but uh, real quick, I, I, uh, sincerely, um, I want to thank you very much for inviting me here today. Uh, like I said, I haven't been in here in a very, very long time.